This video is over the special senses and the anatomy of the ear. I have everything drawn out, so I'm just going to go step by step from the outer ear into the inner ear. So starting out, we have the pinna, and he just wants us to know that that's the outer ear. He doesn't care about anything else. Just the pinna is the whole outer ear, everything you can see. Moving in through the middle ear, you can see over here we have this continuing on. You're going to first uh, reach the eardrum or the tympanic membrane, which is a disc that connects the roof of the canal to the base. And from the tympanic membrane, coming off the top, there's the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And they're three separate little bones but they're all connected and they pivot. So the malleus is actually connected to the eardrum. And when the eardrum or the tympanic membrane vibrates, it vibrates the malleus, which then pivots back and forth, which then moves the incus back and forth, which then moves the stapes back and forth. That's all that is involved in that. Just those three little bones vibrate back and forth and they're connected from the tympanic membrane over to uh, the cochlea. And he doesn't care about the in particular little names. All you need to remember is that all three of these little bones equal the ossicles. And then coming down under them is the tube that he wants us to know, which is the ostean tube, and that drains out of the middle ear. So this whole section, the tympanic membrane, and these three bones in this tube all make up the middle ear. Moving on, once you get out of the middle ear, so this whole section was the middle ear, and we have the cochlea, and inside the first thing it gets to is uh, the vestibule, vestu, uh, or the vestibule, however you want to pronounce it. And what happens is when these three bones vibrate, it uh, sends sound or shock waves into the cochlea. And these sound waves travel through the cochlea, which is the snail part. And if you were to take a section of the cochlea, and bring it over and lay it out straight, or if you were to lay out the entire cochlea, it would look like this if it was in one straight tube. And within the cochlea, there are three chambers, which look like this. So from the section, we have the number one, and Number three are both full of paralymph. And that's all he wants us to know. We, he doesn't care what the sections are called. And paralymph goes on the top and bottom of the cochlea, and it's also going through. Uh, the vestibular branch, which works with uh, our balance. But all you need to know for right now is that the paralymph is on this top and the bottom. And in the center, we have the endolymph. And 
And what happens, and this isn't anatomically correct, but it will help explain what happens, is the sound waves travel through the top layer. And as these sound waves hit this middle section, it'll condense this uh, membrane wall to kind of concave, which will then concave this membrane wall. And he wants us to know that this base right here is the basal membrane. So as these uh, sound waves hit the top and it pushes it down, there's a little bone in here, which he doesn't care that what, what it's called. And this bottom piece right here that is in here, That is the organ of corti. And what's happening is as these two walls vibrate, they move the organ of corti up and down, and there's little hair fibers inside of that space, and they rub up against this little membrane up here. And depending on the frequency that these walls are vibrating at, it sends an electrical current out into the brain. And then the signal, these shock waves, go back the opposite direction they came, they started from, or entered the ear, and they'll work their way out of the cochlea. Because of it, it's an enclosed space, anything coming in has to go out. It can't just uh, be a dead space. If you imagine um, if you had a cup of water or a container of water, and if you were to put a lid or a board across it that had absolutely no space, and you were to try and push down on it, if it got to the level of the water, you wouldn't be able to condense anymore. It would just it would be solid. You couldn't get anything through. And that's what happens is if there wasn't a way for the sound to exit when this, these uh, ossicles vibrate, there was no way for the fluid to move. Nothing would transfer through. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. If we were to take this snail shape, the cochlea, which we have right here, and kind of unravel it so it kind of slinkied out. This is what it would look like. And so sound waves are traveling through the cochlea like this. And at the base is high frequencies, and at the top is low. And it's not just a huge tube of fluid. Well, it's full of fluid, but if you can imagine if you opened a grand piano, you took the lid off and you had all those strings inside, that's kind of what the cochlea is. It's along this strand are just millions of fibers that have hair cells on them. And each one is for a particular tone. So if you hit a key on a piano, it will vibrate a single chord. When you hear something, those tones will find particular chords that they're looking for, and then those chords will vibrate. Um, so not everything is vibrating at once. So to kind of explain that a little bit more in depth, if you move over to this next diagram, imagine that the sound is coming into the cochlea. So it's traveling down the cochlea, 
and it finally reaches, let's say, this little, and these will just be millions of strands, but I just simplified them into a couple. Now let's say this tune hits this uh, chord right here. That will then move the organ of Corti and then send within that this would have been like the center chamber with the organ of Corti and this would send your electrical signal back to the brain and then the sound will exit the other direction. And what happens uh, when they say that the hair fibers are damaged is if this becomes damaged over time and no longer works, it's so it's the organ of corti, it's the little hair fibers in the center. When that signal gets to that box that it needs to vibrate, there's no there's damaged hair fibers, so the signal doesn't go anywhere. So the sound comes in and out, but it didn't actually send the signal to the brain. And this is kind of going more in depth with how it exits when I gave you the glass uh, with the water and you put the board on top and you can't compress it. The sound that travels into the corti or the cochlea, sorry, in one direction in the other direction on the other side, through the other tube, it'll travel back out. And then we have this little window right here. Which is called the oval window. If I was to enlarge that, it's just a little hole kind of with a membrane around it. And when the sound travels back, this can flex out and let the sound out of the ear so that it can decompress. So this is making movement up here and then this is releasing the movement so that the fluid inside can actually vibrate. So moving away from the cochlea, once that sound is made actually, once the sound is made in the cochlea, so let's say a little tone is made there, that signal will travel through the cochlear nerve and then the sound will exit down here. So we're not actually picking up sound in our brain, it's just sending, hitting the cord, sending the signal, and then the sound exits back out. That fluid, the paralymph that's in these top two sections, the paralymph is also all the way through the vestibular branches. The center of the cochlea has the endolymph. Everything else has the paralymph, a different fluid. And the paralymph, all we need to really know is that they're just the three tubes that work 90 degrees around each other at different angles. And that's how we tell balance. And for that, just how the cochlea has a nerve coming off where the sound goes through, the vestibular branch has a nerve that runs alongside of it that enters, this would be deeper into the skull over here on this side. So there's a vestic or vestibular branch and it travels along with the cochlear nerve and that sends the signal to tell us what's up and what's down. And the cochlear branch tells us what we're hearing. So hopefully that kind of helped you guys out and figure the anatomy or the structure of the ear. Again, we have the outer ear, which is just the pinna. We have the middle ear, which is the ossicles the tympanic membrane and the ischian ish ish tube, which is the middle ear. And then we have the inner ear, which is the cochlea, the vestibule, which is considered kind of just this section right here. And then the vestibular branch. And then the 
vestibular nerve, or these are the vestibular branch. So this is what tells us what's up and down, and then it sends it to the vestibular branch out. Um, we have the different layers for the three different chambers for inside the cochlea. The center layer is the one that vibrates and moves the hair fibers and sends the signal. And we know that it spirals out and has individual cords that get struck. And when those get damaged, the signal can't be sent to the brain and the sound just comes in and out. And it's uh, able to exit, the sound is able to exit through the oval window. And that's pretty much it, so I hope that helps you guys out.